Hello, this is Doug at Wood Spun Round. Uh, we're going to turn another goblet stem. Um, I know I've turned one, actually I've turned two, but I've turned one on camera already. Um, but I wanted to turn another one, one partly because I've got a new um, lighting and, and, and uh, microphone set up and I just wanted to check it out. Uh, my preliminary tests look good on that. Uh, I think I've got a piece of cherry here. I'm not real sure. Um, might be a piece of sycamore. This this uh, that grain or or design right there kind of looks like sycamore to me. But these burn marks, when I just now cut it, look like cherry. Plus, where it was split already or split in half, uh, it was coated. That's awfully red. Um, you know, there, again, that's a burn mark from, from cutting that edge off. So that very well might be cherry. Uh, we may know more as we get into it. Let's get it round. We'll start off at 500 RPMs. Come on. There we go. My adjustment was wanting to be extra sensitive tonight. We'll speed that up and then get the uh, rough spindle roughing gouge to round it out. Running now at a thousand thousand RPMs. up a bit closer. Double check my tightness. We're tight. Make sure we're still clear. We are. Should be round all the way around, and we are. I still think that's cherry. All right, we get a bowl gouge. We'll go across there one time. Actually, let's go with a skew just to make a nice, smooth cut across there. Raise that tool rest up. Skew likes to be just a bit higher. Back the other way.
pretty piece of wood. Pretty piece. Still got a rust spot, but we'll get that as we turn it. I'm going to uh, work on getting the the two ends square, and uh, we'll get a get a tenon on one end. Changing over to my Easy Rougher, the CI1, just to bring that tenon down to a general size. Shape it with the skew, just slightly, slightly dovetailed, not very much. Square off the other end. Minimizing that nub. turn my speed back down just to check it there we go that's not bad run my speed back up about a thousand rpms I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean off my nub and then we're gonna drill it just realize I still have my ring on I like to take those off this was a watch. If this was a watch, I would take it off, but it's a rubber band, so it will pop off if, if by chance it were to get caught. up with a little nub or a little divot there. Turn that off so I can move my tool, tool rest. I've got my drill here. This is the drill we've been using. I'll check my link. Okay, 
went as far as I needed to and then went a little further just to make sure all of that's going to stay inside anyway so what I'm going to do here is just open this opening up just a wee bit say I think that's gonna work yep that'll work by the time I put some glue in that perfect now what do I want to do about design well let's let's work on tapering I gotta get rid of some of that meat I've got a lot I got way more wood there than I need so let's get rid of some wood going back to the end so that I can taper this in. I'm going to taper in to the hole just a little bit. Oh yeah, much better. That way, when I do put the glass in there, it will, it will, uh, well, what am I trying to tell you? When it, when I put the glass in, it'll sit down into the wood a little better and, and it won't show so bad. The seam won't show as bad. That one's a little dull. Try this one. That one's dull. And if this one's dull, we'll stop and sharpen. stop and sharpen and I will bring you back just as soon as I get through sharpening. Sharpened all three bowl gouges. Should be better. Let's see what we got.
Okay. See what I've got on the end. Okay. We're okay there. kind of like turning a finial there are times when you just have to stop and check see what you got I'm gonna stop and open turn come back around here open this front end up just a little bit more or drop it I'm gonna what am I gonna do I'm gonna Turn this in just a little bit. I, I want it to be sharper. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'll just see if I've got enough. Take a little more out of the inside. folks this once you get this part done this is a little fidgety a little tedious but once you get this part done I've got to go deeper on the inside uh, once you get this part done the rest of it's easy it's just deciding what kind of shape you want down here uh, in the stem blockage down there that I didn't realize was there. Maybe that's what's holding me out. Maybe because I'm a good bit closer than I was. I'm not hitting the bottom, but I'm hitting I'm hitting where this this is not straight. This is tapered. So I'm getting down. Gotta go a little deeper. A little deeper. All right.
just for the sake of argument, I'm going to make sure I'm deep enough. I wonder, I wonder if that's not what, what the problem's been. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Okay. We're in. Um, I'm turn a little more outside before I decide what I'm doing up here. First thing I'm going to do is set my bottom of my foot. Bottom of the foot, top of the foot. The rest of it's a, a taper or a, a cove from one end to the other. I got a catch there because I was trying to go the wrong way um, and it just doesn't doesn't normally pay off and it didn't this time either so I've got to cut that back a fair bit there we go should be cleaned up now nope just a little bit more Didn't have tool rest support there, and so I wanted to skate back on me just a hair. Not a problem. to rest up a bit there we go I want to check on one thing here just real quick 
I want to check the depth of that hole. See how deep I actually am. I am that deep. I'm was guessing just about perfect. All right. <clears throat> Gonna bring up my skew for just a minute. Want to uh, work on this with a skew, get a nice crisp corner, but I'm gonna make sure it's good and sharp. my speed even more. We're up to 1400 here. bowl gouge so I can clean out this little curve right here. So we've got to lower that tool rest. Add it up for the skew. There we go. blending the two curves together.
going to my detail gouge just to get into this little groove right here. There we have it. That is what I want. Let me work on that just so that little section right there. Better. Little tiny things uh, that you start noticing as you work on refining your curves and those kinds of things. Got a little place right here, but I believe that'll sand out without any problem. Got my fillet there. That's I wanted that. I've been wanting that. All right, it's time to sand. And so I'll bring you back after the sanding section is done. We've sanded to 320. We've used the abrasive paste. Um, what else have we done? We've had some sanding sealer on there. Um, not necessarily in that order, I don't guess. Did the sanding sealer, then the abrasive paste. Now we're ready for a bit of wax. Bring you back in to see the wax. Uh, it already looks good. It's already got a shine to it. Um, the abrasive paste, I'm just amazed how, the, how well it works. Um, regardless of what what brand or where you get it from um, I use the axe uh, at least right now I do uh, I've used some of my own um, I liked it awfully well uh, buying the pre-made stuff is a little easier it's a lot easier for me anyway um, then axe polishing and restoring paste both fine products um, let me tell you this if you go to buy axe if you want to try the axe um, you can only get it online from them so you have to go to axewoodpaste.com to get it from them we'll go at 1500 there we go making sure I got it out of that little groove. I did go back and I cleaned up this little groove here just a little bit. Um, I think that's the only thing I fixed. Oh, uh, fix that. There's something else. Oh, this little edge right here, I, I gave it a little more slant uh, to the inside.
So now we're just buffing. Um, I'm really not putting any pressure on this. Let a little more wax come off of the paper towel and onto the piece. Go to a clean section of the paper towel. Just a touch more wax. I wipe it on there till it starts to feel just a touch tacky. Um, then I'll start to buff it. It doesn't take long for it to start feeling just a little bit tacky. You can, I can feel it uh, rubbing or pulling my paper towel just a touch, just a little more than it did uh, before I put the paper or put the wax on. It's already starting that. Put my lid back on because I have a tendency to knock it off and when I do it goes directly upside down. Don't need much. Um, Part of the trick to the wax is simply let the wax do the job. Uh, you put it on, just let it tack up. You don't have to let it dry, so to speak. Uh, just want it to start getting just a touch tacky. And then you buff it and you do it very lightly. When you get done, if you want just a little more shine, you put some more wax on. Um, I've, put, I've put five or six coats on before. Uh, these two coats here that I'm putting on here is probably all I'm going to put on. Get a cleaner piece of paper towel here. Got a pretty nice shine on the base here. And on the stem itself, it looks good. It looks really good. I am more convinced it's cherry. Uh, at first, when we first put it on the lathe, I thought it was a choice between cherry and sycamore. It's cherry. I'm sure it's cherry. The color is just too much of too red. Uh, sycamore is not nearly that red. Bring the tail stock back up. trying to do here I want to get in here there we go ready to part it off I'll lower the speed back down to 800 looks good let's see
go to my fan parting tool, my homemade There you have it. I'll uh, sand that off, put my mark on it, but there you have it. That's uh, a cherry stem for a goblet. Get my goblet, the glass still has to be cleaned yet, but there you have it, stem and all. I uh, hope you can see all of that. It uh, came out pretty nice. I, I'm pretty pleased with that one. A little taller than the other two I have. That's great. It all fits together nicely. Feel just a little movement in there but uh, I'll use Gorilla Glue clear and that will fill that up quite nice like I said I'll sand that bottom off put my mark on it and it'll be ready to go well I'm glad you joined me today I hope you've had a good time I hope you've learned something if this is the first time to the channel uh, first time seeing my work then uh, I would appreciate it if you'd uh, go down just below the picture there and hit that subscribe button hit the uh, notification bell they'll let you know every time that I put a new video up on YouTube. Um, it, it'll give you a notification of that. So um, if you'll hit the like button as well, uh, even leave a comment. If you have friends that would would uh, could benefit, maybe they could learn something or maybe they just enjoy watching other people work. Um, share it out with them. Those things, those are the things that help this channel more than anything else. If you hit the like button, subscribe and share it out. And I sure would appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Until we get to uh, be together again, this is Doug at the shop of Wood Spun Round. Until we meet again, I hope you're able to spin them round.